Hello. If you have a small, chi small child, you have probably been in this situation. Maybe you're at the playground um, with some friends, maybe you're at home and your mother-in-law is visiting and your child is having an absolute meltdown over the toast being cut wrong or um, they can't play with the play on the slide because the bigger kids are there and your child's melting down and screaming and crying on the ground and your well-meaning mother-in-law or your friend says, just ignore her, just walk away, just ignore her. The best thing to do is ignore a tantrum. I am here to tell you today that ignoring a tantrum is not the best thing to do and I'm gonna tell you why and I'm gonna tell you what to do instead. So um, the first thing that might happen if you ignore a tantrum is that your, your child might um, turn up the volume. So what I mean by that is the tantrum will escalate, get louder and louder, more and more intense if you ignore it because, th and this is especially common for strong-willed kids, um, your child wants to make sure that you are getting the message so they're going to turn up the volume. What do you do instead of ignoring that? Um, you bring your empathy, you show your understanding and that really sometimes is enough to really bring down the bring down the volume of the tantrum and stop it in its tracks if your child can see that you understand and that you're empathetic and loving. Um, and this is challenging for a lot of parents because we often can't find our empathy about the toast being cut wrong or the juice is in the pink cup instead of the blue cup or it's not their turn on the slide. It's really hard to relate to the big feelings of a three-year-old or a five-year-old. But there have been times when you've been sad or disappointed or frustrated. Connect with that. Connect with your own experiences of being um, deeply frustrated or sad or disappointed and you'll find it much easier than actually trying to empathize with the exact thing that your child is feeling. Um, so that's number one is um, if you ignore a tantrum it can escalate. Um, your child will turn up the volume until they see that you get it. So really just bring your empathy and your understanding. Number two uh, reasons not to ignore a tantrum is that your child could stop. And I know that sounds funny that um, you shouldn't ignore a tantrum because it might stop. Um, most people want the tantrums to stop, so they, if they think that they ignore it, that's a really good thing. The problem with this are, are two things. First of all, um, your child isn't stopping because that they actually don't have a problem anymore. They are desperately afraid of being abandoned. That's the worst thing in the world for a child is to, to be abandoned, whether it's literally walking away from them at the store or ignoring them um, and they're experiencing that as love withdrawal. That is not um, the lesson that you want to teach your child that when they have big feelings and they're upset, they're on their own. And the only time that you are going to be there and be there for them is when they're feeling good. I, I think most of us as parents really want our children to know that they're here with us, that we're here for them no matter what. And if you ignore a child when they're having a tantrum, you're sending the opposite message. You're sending the message, I'm only here for you if you're being pleasant and things are easy and, and, um, and you're okay. The second reason why you don't want to um, ignore a tantrum, and even if it stops the tantrum, is because it doesn't help your child um, uh, process their feelings. What it does is they'll they'll shut the feelings down and they'll suppress the feelings. So your child's you know lying on the floor in the middle of Toys R Us and you threaten to leave. Your child can very quickly um, tamp down the feelings, shut them down because they're so desperately afraid of being left but that sends a message to your child that feelings are dangerous and that upset feelings are to be avoided at all costs. Look, mom is leaving or dad's leaving. That must mean that these feelings that I'm having are really um, to be avoided. And honestly, a lot of the problems that we're having in our culture today are, culture, are, are problems of emotion. So we have people who are depressed. We have people who are anxious. We have people who are explosive. And those are all things that come from um, habitually suppress, suppressing your feelings and, and bottling up your feelings. We, we numb out with screens, food, alcohol, being too busy. Um, and these are all ways that we, you know, our little addictions that we use to avoid our feelings. So if you ignore your child when they're having big feelings, you are sending them that message that big feelings are dangerous and something to be avoided. So even if the tantrum stops when you ignore it um, and you know walk away or withdraw your love from your child for that moment, that is not the life lesson that you want to teach your child and you really want to teach your child to be um, emotionally uh, resilient and be able to handle anything that life throws in his or her way. 
Um, the uh, last reason why I, I don't recommend that you ignore your child's tantrums is that it doesn't teach your child how to manage their big feelings. Um, babies and small children, literally, uh, their brains develop in a way that as we soothe them, they learn to soothe themselves. It's, it's, a, it's a skill and it's um, something that our brains, as we develop and our brains mature, we become capable of, of soothing ourselves and we learn that from being soothed by other people. So when you soothe an upset child and you stay um, with them calmly and lovingly, you're showing them that um, that this is this isn't an emergency, basically, and that it, they'll get over it, they'll be okay, and you're teaching them not to be completely thrown off by their big feelings. So staying with a child, an upset child, and um, being calm and being loving is actually helping their brain develop in a way that they will be able to do that for themselves. They'll be able to manage the storm of their own big emotions. If you send an upset child to their room or walk away, ignore them, that does not teach them how to soothe, learn to soothe themselves and learn to manage their big feelings and learn that self-regulation that we really want our kids to have. Um, and yeah, um, so I actually I'll just share a quick story. My daughter, when she was eight, she got an a American Girl gift certificate and we thought it would be good at a particular store that had American Girl products and she spent about an hour choosing something that she wanted to buy and when she went up to the counter you know she asked me to stay back she was gonna go and she's big and she's gonna go and and pay for this herself and she put the toy down and she handed the gift certificate over and the woman looked at her and said oh honey I'm sorry we we can't take this here this is for the online store only and I just went oh, inside I was just oh no this is gonna be terrible and my daughter took a breath and said, I just need a minute. She picked up her stuff and she walked over to the side of the store and she took a couple of deep breaths and she composed herself and I couldn't believe it. I was so impressed. Everyone around me was staring and um, one woman even said, if that was my kid, she'd be on the floor right now. Um, and granted, she was eight at the time and no, probably no four-year-old or five-year-old would be able to manage their disappointment like that. But really, I think that this is because, um, you know, she wasn't, she was not ignored when she was having big feelings. She, she was, I would soothe her. I would um, show her empathy and understanding and I would not leave her alone with her big feelings. So she didn't worry that she was going to get swamped and she didn't have a crazy total meltdown because she couldn't get the toy that she wanted. So that's just a little, that's just a little aside. Um, and I also wanted to say one more thing, if you're not convinced yet that you should not ignore a child who is having a tantrum. Picture you've had um, a, a bad day or God forbid somebody in your life has died or is very sick and you're crying and um, you know maybe you're even having a little mom or dad tantrum yourself and slamming things around and your partner comes into the room and sees how upset you are and says, um, you get yourself together and I'll come back when you're feeling good again and walks out of the room and shuts the door. I think most of us would agree that that would feel pretty horrible. What we need is someone to come over and say, you are having such a hard time right now. Give us a hug, be there with us, um, soothe us, reassure us that everything's gonna be okay. So um, I hope that I've convinced you that ignoring a tantrum is not the way to go. Um, and I know some of you are probably thinking, well, what do we do about the problem that caused that tantrum in the first place? After your child is calm, that's the time where you are going to address the problem. It might not even need it might not even need anything. Maybe your kid just needed a good cry and they've had a good cry and the moment has passed and, and everything's okay again. But if there is something you need to address, nobody can think straight when they're hijacked by their big emotions or when they're in fight or flight. Your logical brain is literally gone offline and you can't um, you can't access that part of your brain when you're upset. That's why when you're in a fight with your partner, um, you can never solve anything because you're both too upset to think logically. So the best thing to do is wait until after the storm has passed. That's the time to teach. That's the time for a lesson. And until then, just stay close, um, show your empathy, do your best that you can to soothe your child, and um, your child will develop a lot of emotional resilience and self-regulation and you will be glad that you did that. Uh, if you would like a 
download of these tips, you can go to sarahrosensweet.com forward slash downloads and you can get a printable version of these tips. You can put it up on your um, bulletin board. You can share it with a friend. Again, that's Sarah Rosen Sweet forward slash downloads. And I just realized I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning of this video. I am Sarah Rosen Sweet, peaceful parenting coach. You can find me at sarahrosensweet.com or you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook group if you're interested in learning more about this kind of parenting. It is Peaceful Parenting with Sarah Rosen Sweet. Thank you and have a great day.